privilege, was it a mistake by Speaker McCarthy to give access to Tucson Carlson of this security footage? No. My uh, concern is how it was depicted, which is a different issue. Okay, so he's saying he has an issue with how it was depicted, but all Tucker is doing is showing footage that the government, uh, the J6 committee and the media up to this point have withheld from the public. So he's now showing this video, and if what is in the video conflicts uh, with what is in the, this report that he's talking about, well, that's that's his problem. Like, I thought we cared about the truth. Apparently not. Apparently, we're more concerned with covering the asses of bureaucrats and politicians. Clearly, the chief of the Capitol Police, in my view, correctly describes what most of us witnessed firsthand on January 6th. Okay, here's the thing, though. They didn't see everything. Obviously, they can only see what they saw. They didn't see it all. Uh, and all the public has seen is what the media, the January 6th committee, the government, politicians like McConnell have cherry-picked and shown the public. And that's a problem considering we've known for a long time, but now we know for sure that they've been lying to us about many things from the beginning, about many narratives. And a big part of doing that is showing us cherry-picked footage. But they're going to tell us that it's Tucker that's cherry-picking footage. So that's my reaction to it. Um, it was a mistake, in my view, for Fox News to depict this in a way that's completely at variance with what our chief law enforcement official here at Capitol thinks. Okay, so this is odd. Like, you're going to get up there and you're going to say that the issue here is that Fox News is depicting, he's accusing Fox News and Tucker Carlson of depicting the footage in a certain way that conflicts with the officer's uh, report here. Again, like, if that's the case, he lied. And Tucker Carlson and Fox are... Uh, showing the truth. They withheld that footage from the public because it conflicted with their narratives. It's very clear. They claim Brian Sicknick was killed by protesters. That was a lie. They claim that they knew nothing about Ray Epps. He's just a, a normal guy. Uh, that turned out to be a lie. Uh, they claim that a Republican congressman was leading rioters around D.C. in a reconnaissance mission. That turned out to be a lie. They claim that the QAnon shaman uh, was some big leading figure of a violent insurrection. But then it turns out we see all this footage that we've never seen of him being escorted around inside. And then later, the same guy gives a speech where he thanks the Capitol Police for letting them in and escorting them around, which is what we see in the video. Now, they try to say that, no, the police were just uh, trying to de-escalate and trying to do everything peacefully. Except in the video, you can see it's just him. And there, throughout the thing, there's a total of like nine police. They could have easily uh, arrested him peacefully. No big deal. But they, they didn't. They were escorting him. The only reason we now know about that is because this footage was finally released to the public and Tucker is making it available. But these people, McConnell, Turtle McConnell here, is worried that what they show conflicts with this report. Now, if that's the case, it seems like the scandal is that the report is false and misleading. Good. Depicting it, but he's been forecasting this for months, asking for this access to this footage to have a presentation just like this. Yeah, Was yeah. it a mistake for <laughs> the speaker to hand that? Over? You guys know I have many faults, but one of them is not answering the question in a way that I don't want to answer it. I've given you the answer. <laughs> Shall I give you the same answer again? <laughs> okay, the reason that we're pushing back against that is because there was no insurrection. Yes, there was a, a little pocket of violence where there was uh, a small handful of people compared to the larger uh, uh, group of people that were at the Capitol. There were 20,000 people there. You never see video of them, do you? They were peaceful. They were just marching around exactly as Trump told them. He said, go march peacefully, make your voices heard. That's what 20,000 people did. OK, and yet they focus on this handful of people that fought with riot police out of that handful of people. 
Uh, most of the people that were in the Capitol just walked in there. They were either let in by police, which is video the media doesn't want you to look at. Uh, there's plenty of video of it happening. They just let them in. They walked around. They stayed within velvet ropes. They weren't like tearing down the ropes and throwing them and breaking stuff. And then out of those people, you know, you have all these people being charged with these ridiculous prison sentences for what amounts to trespassing. And that's what this is about. You know, it's, it's clearly the media has and the Democrats have a vested interest in portraying it a certain way to benefit the Democrat Party. And we know that for a fact, because, look, we all know that there was many, many years worth of riots that in large part were incited by a media that was putting out uh, misinformation, disinformation, like hands up, don't shoot. Or when it came to Jacob Blake, that he was somehow innocent uh, when he the shooting was completely justified, yet they incited riots for that. You had ambushes on police from BLM sports, but all of that is just kind of left to go down the memory hole, never to be spoken of again. And then you have this one riot pop off at the Capitol and they use it for years to come to their political benefit. Before that, it was, uh, it was Charlottesville. But you'll never hear about the Trump supporters that were gunned down by Antifa or BLM supporters at protests who were doing nothing. You'll never hear about that. It's not going to be brought up again and again. Uh, it, it's strictly these sorts of events that they use for political propaganda as long as they possibly can. And that's why they're so worried about this now, because they've been taking part in what amounts to a lie. We've known, like I said, I've done videos going years back uh, about how this stuff was live, but it's becoming harder and harder for them to keep that narrative going. And that's why we're seeing this backlash against Tucker, which I want to quickly say is very odd, right? Because during Trump, what did we, what did we hear that? Any kind of criticism of the media was a danger to democracy, was threatening to journalists. Brian Stelter said that Tucker Carlson, when he criticized CNN, was leading a hate movement. OK, but it's totally OK for all these people to come out for Tucker Carlson when all he's doing is presenting video that up to this point has been hidden from the public. And we're going to see more of it. They're scared. And so we're going to see the fear mongering about it ramped up. Uh, and I would say that anybody like McConnell here that you see that have a real problem with it, those are the people that are most likely to be busted by all this. Because I'll tell you right now, there's one way you can tell what a real journalist is and what a fake journalist. Because an actual real journalist is going to be interested in digging into a story, getting any sort of information and transparency from the government out into the public for the public to make a decision. That's what real journalists do. They don't demonize and fear monger against other journalists for putting out information that should be publicly available. They don't suppress and censor information that's damaging to their preferred political party. All right, folks, that's all I have for that report. I hope you enjoyed it. You should definitely like, share, and subscribe, then leave a comment to let us all know what you think about this. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you all in the next one.